Nobody else comes in free to watch these rehearsals. Everybody else. Maybe I'll let you have reservations next week sometime. Make it for ringside Thursday night. Dr. Beeney. I am Mrs. Minnie Lambert Spa. And I am Senor Tommaso Spinaggio Victor. Now, please, get out. Mr. Victor, you don't understand. The man standing in back of me is the sheriff. No favorites. First come, first. What? Oh, I, uh, uh, don't. Nobody leave this room. Hey, what is this? It's a pinch. That's all, brother. That's all, sister. Hey, wait a minute. Since when is music against the law? In the spring of 1941, Ozzie and Harriet made a musical for Columbia called Sweethearts of the Campus with Ruby Keeler and Gordon Oliver. It opened in June. Shortly after, they were playing the Palace Hotel in San Francisco when Ed Fisherman of William Morris called. Brown and Williamson Tobacco was going to sponsor a radio show in the fall. It was to star Red Skelton. They wanted Ozzie and Harriet on the show to sing duets and appear in comedy sketches. Are you kidding? If you can find any iniquity around here, I'll go 50-50 with you. The new program debuted on Tuesday, October 7, 1941, at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC. The Raleigh Cigarette Program from Hollywood, starring Red Skelton, with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and yours truly, Truman Bradley. <laughs> Holiday bells will jingle, spirits will really tingle, if you give Raleigh cigarettes for Christmas, packed in their bright, colorful gift carton. Raleigh's are blended to please every smoker. Yes... 31 separate and distinctly finer tobaccos go into Raleigh's superb blend for smoother, richer, milder flavor, greater smoking satisfaction. And in giving Raleigh's, you present a gift of distinction. Anyone can actually see that Raleigh's cigarettes are better made from the more golden tobaccos. Tobaccos that experts agree are choicer, more expensive. So this Christmas, give the cigarette that gives more. The pack with the coupon on the back, Raleigh Cigarettes. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayor's young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, you, Truman. Hello, Red. Been out Christmas shopping? No, I always look this way on Meatless Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Red, I suppose you're going home for Christmas, aren't you? I certainly am, if I can get a seat on that sunset bus. No, 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 Red. I mean, are you going back to Vincennes, Indiana? Well, well, I'd like to, Truman, but you know, if I bought a ticket on a train or a bus, it might deprive some soldier of a seat. Well, gee, I never thought of that, Red. Yep. I suppose a lot of soldiers will be going home for Christmas. Yeah, I saw one boy down the station saying goodbye to his girl this morning. Boy, did he give her a long kiss. Was it really a long kiss? Yeah, I felt sorry for the girl. <laughs> she tripped over a switch as they were passing Pomona. <laughs> But Red, despite the fact that it's nice to be going home for Christmas, it is much more important to let soldiers use our trains than for you and me to go home and see Uncle Jamesy. Sure, besides, who wants to go to Alcatraz over the holiday? <laughs> I was in the jug once. <laughs> you were, Ozzy? Yeah, I whistled at what I thought was a weak sister. What was it? An able-bodied whacker. <laughs> Hiya, Harriet. Say, you're not planning to go home on the Christmas holidays, are you? Oh, no. Today, soldiers come first. Yeah, you know, I know a soldier who came home on a furlough. He opened the door and he says, well, here I am at last. What happened, Red? Well, they told him about no meat, no butter, no eggs, no gas, no coffee, and one lump of sugar. <laughs> mm -hmm. He opened the door and says, which way is Guadalcanal? <laughs> I'll bet that some of the soldiers that are going home for Christmas haven't seen their folks for over a year. That's right. I sure hope that people realize that if they try to travel over the holidays, they'll tie up the rail and bus traffic so that nobody will be able to travel. Oh, I think they know that, Red. Yeah, you know, I'll never forget the time I had to ride on a crowded train. I had to stand up all the way to Kansas City. Well, that's not so bad. In an upper berth? <laughs> Take a lower bird. No, I don't like them. Why not? Somebody's always trying to play footsies with my face. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Red, did you hear from Wonderful Smith this week? Yes, I got a letter from Wonderful Smith. Would you like to hear it? Oh, yes, read it, Red. Okay, it says, Dear Mr. Skelton and Friends, I'm here... Boy, he writes fast, don't he? <laughs> says, Dear Mr. Skelton and Friends, well, all day long I've been sitting here looking at a barrage balloon overhead. <laughs> By the way, ask my girl to write me a letter, will you? <laughs> 
Does this army life is really, uh, really healthy? Up every morning, I started to say Raleigh healthy there, do you know? <laughs> Up every morning at 5.30 and under an ice cold shower. Some morning I'm gonna turn it on to see what'll happen. <laughs> Anymore? <laughs> yeah, he goes on, he says, uh, oh yes, the other day one of our cadets got balled out. Our plane was 25,000 feet in the air when I started to form on the wings. He wanted to crawl out and make a snowman. <laughs> Anything about the food, Red? Yeah, he says, uh, tonight we're going to have thousands of good things to eat. Gee, did he say what it was gonna be? Yeah, beans. <laughs> P.S. Red. Uh, P.S. I rode to the dairy this morning after 38 gallons of milk. I won't say these jeeps are rough riding, but I don't know what we're going to do with all this butter. <laughs> as long as you're not in love with anyone else. Why don't you fall in love with me? You're driving me crazy, baby, trying to guess. By March of 1942, the show's rating had climbed to 32.5, fourth highest on radio. Roughly 24 million people were tuning in. Along with Bob Hope and Fibber McGee and Molly, the Red Skelton Show helped form NBC's vaunted Tuesday night comedy trio. Why don't you fall in love with me? In 1943, it was The Skelton Show, that was the highest rated on the air. Ozzy would later call working with Red in education and comedy. But if class was in session, all three were learning from each other. The trio had great chemistry. Oh, I'm getting married Friday. How about Saturday night? Harriet's vaudeville training proved to be a tremendous asset. She originated the characters Daisy June, Calamity Jane, and the mother of Junior, the mean widow kid. And then after that, he went into radio with Red Skelton, who was Ollie Figure. Mm -hmm. And you played Junior's mother. On... I did the uh, mother, the <laughs> mean little kid. <laughs> and then I did Daisy June, mm -hmm. Clem Canigo Hopper. I did Baby Dead Eye. Yeah. 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 And I did yeah. Calamity yeah. June. You and I elope tonight. Did you have fun working with Red? Uh, on oh, and, yeah. He's he such like a brilliant mm -hmm. comedy. I've often said, when he was right, when his timing was so right, I used to get chills down my back. He was like, what you do a great symphony, you oh, know? It's such a talent. As long as you're not in love with anyone else, why don't you fall in love with me? I've got a C card. Why don't you fall in love with me? <laughs> Harriet Hilliard singing As long as you're not in love With anyone else Why don't you fall in love With Ozzy <laughs> Now that the Christmas spirit Has, <laughs> has everybody uh, Buying presents I'm proud to say That the Teamsters Union Of Southern California Are buying One million Raleigh cigarettes A month for the boys Overseas for the duration Of the war And that's really Some present And speaking of uh, buying Let's look in on Different people In department stores Tonight First, we'll start out west, where we find Deadeye. He's working as a bank messenger over the holiday. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, come on, horse boy! <laughs> here, here, stop bucking! Here! Oh. Look, horse, for two cents, I'd sell you for dog meat. <laughs> On second thought, I think I'll keep you myself. This... Yeah, meat ration looked pretty serious. <laughs> Store to say gas ration. I guess it's the kind of meat I eat. <laughs> now see if you can behave while I go into the Bon Bon department store. Hello, did I? Hello, Buckshot. <laughs> Gosh, did I? You look like a real dude today. Yeah, how you like my new shirt? I just got it. Oh, it's a beautiful shirt. Yeah. What kind of material is that? Silk? Nope. Cotton? Nope. Well, if it ain't silk and it ain't cotton, what is it? Linoleum. <laughs> hey, what are you doing in this department store? Well, I'm helping out during the Christmas rush. Business must be good. The owner just called me up to take the gold to the bank. Well, did I? It's after three o'clock. How are you going to get into the bank? Now, she ought to know better than that. <laughs> what was that? Oh, just the manager making a cheerful refund. Yeah. <laughs> Say, the gold ain't been 
didn't count it yet, did I? Why don't you look around the store? Maybe you see something you'd like to give somebody for Christmas. That's a good idea. I think I'll give a nightgown to the one I love. Oh, did I? You catch your death of cold in a nightgown. <laughs> Over my long underwear? So here's something you'll like, a ten-gallon hat. Nope, give me a four-gallon hat. I got an A head. <laughs> Hey, gal, where's the perfumey counter? Well, with you in the store, did I? It's kind of hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy, did I? Hello there, Seagram Nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, did I? Here's ten thousand dollars in yellow gold. I want you to take it to the bank. Say, you've been hanging around that two-gun Bert Pluma lately, haven't you? Uh, what do you mean, did I? You wouldn't be letting me take this gold so the two-gun could hold me up and make the bank liable, would you? You say that again, I'll make you eat your word. Well, make me eat my word, yeah. huh? Okay. T-bone steak, lamb chops, and veal. <laughs> Lorene Tuttle, who later appeared with Ozzie and Harriet on their own show, also starred on The Red Skelton Show. I understand that he put on a after show for the studio audience when the regular radio broadcast... Yes, he broadcast did. At least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. He got steamed up, you know, and the half-hour show didn't really satisfy him, so he kept the uh, audience there afterwards. When we, when we were on Fridays, we would have a preview on Thursday night, and he would go on and on and on and on. We'd have to stay there, because we'd have to wait till this after show was over before we could listen to the record. And oh, we would huh. listen to the record to see how things went. And then we came back the next day and did the live show, always live. I don't think I ever went on that we weren't live. Yeah. Did you have to do two shows then, didn't you, for the West Coast and the East Coast? No. In that case, no, because it was taken off on transcription and replayed. Many times we would do a 5 o'clock show, mm -hmm. and that would be taken off on transcription and played later. But in the old days, we did do two shows. Mm -hmm. We would have an afternoon show, a 5 o'clock show, or a 5.30 show, and then come back and do it again at 8.30. Mm -hmm. But those were a lot of audience shows, too. We would wear street clothes in the afternoon and come back and wear evening clothes. Oh, you really? Oh, would yes, it was a very glamorous two business. Two uh -huh. different audiences. Mm -hmm. there. Over at the Huntington Hartford, when I go backstage there, I think of the many radio shows we used to do there. The Lux Radio sh Show went mm -hmm. on there, and lots of radio shows went on because they were audience shows. That's why I felt that radio was not just a microphone working kind mm -hmm. of show; it was audience participation and. For three seasons, the group's popularity soared as they became some of the most loved entertainers in America. But then Skelton got divorced. It meant that he lost his married deferment and could now be drafted. The Army called for him in 1944. MGM and Raleigh Cigarettes tried to get a deferment to no avail. Skelton's last radio program was on D-Day, June 6, 1944. The next day, he was formally inducted as a private. Without its star, the program was discontinued. Skelton's producer John Goodell and Ozzie Harriet both agreed. It was time for the Nelsons to launch their own radio show. It would come to be known as The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. 